Maine is kind of a bucket list state for many hunters. I know it was for me. My life has been filled with many firsts after 27 years in the military, 14 combat tours, and more injuries than I ever could count. So my first moose hunt in Maine, well, that was a no-brainer. I'm Jack Stobelmeyer. Uh, I go by Rusty, uh, the owner of Rustic Knives. With forging a knife, uh, of course you get good uh, knife steel, a carbon steel, and uh, that's hand forged, hand hammered out on an anvil. And uh, once you get it to the, the shape that you want, length, width, thickness, and everything like that, kneel it, make the steel soft. Then I go to my grinders, and uh, I do the final grind onto the knife. I shape it, grind the bevels in, and then uh, off the heat treat, and I heat treat right there in my shop. Uh, quench it, temper it, and then uh, do the final grind to bring the edge down to uh, the measurements that we want prior to sharpening. The knife's done, you know, you, you got this gorgeous thing that you've made and then you got to make the sheath for it, do some leather work and everything, just put it all together. I went to the Marine Corps, I enlisted in 1982 and uh, I was out in Hawaii, 3rd Marines, did a tour out uh, in the Marine Corps, then got out for about six months. Realized I probably shouldn't have got out of the military. I ended up joining the Army as a paratrooper. I was stationed out in Fort Ord, California, 7th Infantry Division. I served in Honduras during Golden Pheasant. That was an operation not a lot of people know about during the Reagan era. Invasion of Panama for up Operation Just Cause. Right after that, I'd re-enlisted and went to the 82nd Airborne Division just in time to go to the first Gulf War. I was over there for Desert Shield, Desert Storm. Then I was sent over to Italy. It was soon to be the 173rd Airborne Brigade. Participated in the Balkans Air War. Primary jump master for the jump into Kosovo. After my time was up there in the 173rd, came back to Fort Bragg. Went to a Special Operations Unit. 9-11 kicked off. That's where I did most of my time. Combat time overseas between Afghanistan and Iraq. Ended up retiring as a sergeant major out of that unit in 2009. After I retired, uh, I went directly into contracting like a lot of uh, retirees do. And then uh, I, I was, I just lost my way. I was totally lost. I made some really dumb decisions, just drinking, fighting. Um, my wife and I were not getting along. And uh, I was going down a dark path, I really was. And. Uh, my partner, Chris Williams, invited me out to his shop, and I was running a lathe and a mill for him, making parts for the uh, grinders that he makes. And he's a knife maker, and he was uh, showing me the ropes and showing me more of the production side of the house. And I started making knives, and he was like, Jack, you're a natural. Here's a grinder. Go home and make knives. So that's how Rustic Knives kind of started. I've got a brain tumor from multiple traumatic brain injuries, getting conked in the head. Uh, bad parachute landing falls and stuff like that, IEDs, explosions, and that's that's affecting me a little bit more than it did back in the past, but now it's it's starting to grow, I guess. I don't know. Uh, a couple neck surgeries, my neck's fused, reconstructed shoulder surgery, compound fracture in my elbow, I've got a thread rod in my arm, uh, knees replaced, broken ankles, you know, broken arms, stuff like that. You just, you just beat up. just. You sacrifice your body for your country, you truly do. Social services came to me, and uh, you know you've been named the father of this child, and, and uh, this woman wants to give her up for adoption. But I had to sign the papers. Well, I'm living in an open squad bay in the Marine Corps, as a private first class, 20 years old. So what am I going to do with a baby? You know, and, and who am I to say no to her? What the mother's wishes are? So. 
She was put up for adoption and uh, adopted within a couple days by, again, a wonderful family, wonderful family that uh, gave her the world, a lot more than I could have done at that time. So last September, I got a letter in the mail from uh, my daughter that I've been looking for forever, and actually she found me. You know, I got through, uh, I got through about not even the first paragraph and broke down and just uh, emotions hit. Just I cried for a half hour before I could even finish the letter. It was so wonderful. It was a part of me that uh, had been missing for 30 years. I knew she was out there, always worried about her. You know, was she, was she safe? Was she loved? Was she secure? And uh, I couldn't have picked a better set of uh, adoptive parents for her. She had a wonderful life, wonderful upbringing. Uh, college graduate, she owns her own business. She's just amazing. She's just beautiful. I was really thrilled to hear that John was, uh, was bringing Jack uh, on this year's veterans moose hunt here in Maine. 6'4", 270, just a mountain of a man. And when you get to know him, he's, he's just a huge teddy bear. Um, one of those guys that, that you, um, you connect with really quickly. It's funny, the, the, the job that I had contracting, I was making a lot of money, it was great. And, and the, on the outside, that's what people think success is. But going through the dark part in my life was kind of like the Phoenix being reborn. And I could not be happier with what I'm doing now. I'm home every day. My daily commute's about 18 paces to the front door of my shop, out the back door of my house. You know, my kids are awesome. Life's great and wonderful. But I, I just, I couldn't be happier. Sergeant Major Jack Rusty Stottlemyre. Everyone here at Mossy Oak extends their most heartfelt thank you for your service. We are honored to know you.